Born of Norwegian descent, Eric Rowan, or Joseph Rude, was raised in a small Minnesota town called Montrose. Rowan was a natural athlete, being involved in sports throughout his teen years, which included playing football while attending the University of Morris, Minnesota. In his early 20s, Eric Rowan pursued a different sport, wrestling. He was trained by a man named Eddie Sharkey, who had the nickname the Trainer of Champions. This helped set Rowan up for success, and in less than five years, Eric Rowan was invited to train and compete in Japan. This experience eventually led to an even bigger opportunity for Rowan, a chance to wrestle for WWE. In 2011, Red B was signed by the company and sent to their development system, FCW. Upon his debut, Rowan would form an alliance with Byron Saxton of all people, as well as another wrestler named James Bronson. Beyond that, there wasn't much of note during Eric Rowan's career in FCW, but that would change. In 2012, FCW was rebranded as NXT, and after 9 years of wrestling, Eric Rowan would have his first match in WWE. Rowan's opponent, a man named Oliver Gray, was already in the ring, but instead of Redbeard, Bray Wyatt came out. The Eater of Worlds gave a cryptic message before introducing Gray, as well as the fans, to his quote, son, Eric Rowan. Redbeard lumbered into the ring, and the match began. Rowan didn't allow his opponent a chance to make the match competitive by immediately knocking Gray down with a big boot. Wyatt's son grabbed Oliver Gray with his monstrous hands and slammed him into the turnbuckle and then the floor of the ring. Eric Rowan continued his assault with his tree trunk-like arms and his hard head. The monster then used a more traditional wrestling move, the body slam, while continuing to stalk his opponent. Oliver Gray would manage to get a few shots in, but all that did was make Rowan angrier. Eric Rowan then squeezed Gray as hard as he could before putting his opponent in the corner and ramming Oliver with his entire body. Redbeard then executed a huge sidewalk slam and covered the lifeless man to win the match. Nothing out of the ordinary, Rowan's first match was just a typical squash. The only thing that looked odd was when he did the bear hug, but besides that, everything was fine. It was a bit weird seeing the sidewalk slam as a finisher, but to their credit, Rowan and Gray made it look good. Soon after his debut, Rowan would meet his brother, Luke Harper, another follower of Wyatt. The two sons formed a tag team and soon entered a tournament with the winners becoming the first NXT Tag Team Champions. Rowan and Harper made it all the way to the finals, only to be defeated by Neville and, ironically, Oliver Gray. However, it was Rowan who had the last laugh, as he and Luke Harper defeated Neville and Bo Dallas, who was serving as a replacement due to Gray being injured, and the Wyatts won the NXT Tag Team Championship. They remained champions for the next few months, but were dethroned in their second title offense when Rowan and Harper were defeated by Corey Graves and Neville. During all this, videos started being shown on Raw of Eric Rowan, as well as Bray and Luke Harper. This is also when Rowan would start wearing his signature sheep mask. Eventually, the group would make their main roster debut on Raw. After defeating Christian in a Money in the Bank qualifying match, Kane was attacked and injured by the Wyatts. A few weeks after the assault, Eric Rowan had his first match on the main roster when he teamed up with Luke Harper and defeated Tons of Funk in about a minute. The Sons of Bray helped their father defeat Kane at SummerSlam and put an end to what they started. Rowan would continue to tag with Harper, and they won the majority of their matches. The two eventually got their first pay-per-view match at the 2013 Survivor Series, where they were defeated by CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Rowan did sort of avenge that loss by defeating Daniel Bryan in a 3-on-1 handicap match at TLC. Anyways, in 2014, a dream match took place. After costing The Shield an opportunity to compete in the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match, the Wyatts and The Shield decided to face each other. The Wyatts won that match, as well as a rematch on Raw about a week later. Bray Wyatt would soon begin a feud with John Cena, and Rowan, being the son that he is, assisted him during the rivalry, which didn't always work, but it's a thought that counts, right? Around this time, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper would start going after the WWE Tag Team Championship. They competed against the champions, the Usos, on back-to-back -back pay per views but the Wyatt's attempts were unsuccessful. With the Wyatt family sizzling out, Bray would set Rowan and Harper free, and the group came to an end. Rowan was quiet for a while, but made a big comeback when he joined John Cena in Cena's fight against the Authority. Redbeard would even compete on Cena's team at Survivor Series, and although Rowan was pinned, his team still ultimately won. During the match, one of Team Cena's members, The Big Show, turned on his partners and joined the Authority. This set up a short rivalry between Big Show and Rowan, which led to a stairs match at TLC that Eric Rowan lost. Things only got worse, as shortly after TLC, Eric Rowan, as well as Dolph Ziggler and Ryback, were fired by the Authority for helping John Cena. Cena would get an opportunity to get all three men their jobs back by competing in a handicap match. 
Thanks to some assistance from Sting, Cena won, and Rowan, as well as everyone else, was back. Unfortunately, the next few months were kind of uneventful for Redbeard. Things didn't get interesting again until May of 2015. After Luke Harper defeated Fandango, Eric Rowan came out to confront his former Wyatt family member. To the fans' surprise, Rowan attacked Fandango, and it turned out he and Harper were back together. The two started competing in tag team matches again, and were doing well, until they hit a road bump. Eric Rowan was injured during a non-televised event and needed time off. After being out for several months, Rowan was ready to return in October. By this time, Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt were back together, along with a new member of the family, Braun Strowman. Rowan would assist the group when they kidnapped The Undertaker and later Kane, and also helped them defeat the ECW Originals at TLC. Arguably, one of Rowan's most memorable moments, though, happened during his second run in the Wyatt family. At WrestleMania 32, The Rock came out to announce the record-breaking attendance for the show. While The Great One was in the ring, Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, and Eric Rowan came out to confront Rocky. The Rock was prepared and challenged the Wyatts to an impromptu match. Eric Rowan stepped up and was defeated by the Brahma Bull in 6 seconds, number 1 on the list of top 10 fastest WrestleMania matches. A few months after the encounter with The Rock, the Wyatt family would downsize. Luke Harper was out with an injury, Braun Strowman was drafted to Raw, and Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan went to SmackDown. Things did not go well for Rowan. He lost every match he had on the blue brand and was soon taken off TV to undergo surgery. He was out for 8 months and wouldn't return until the SmackDown after WrestleMania 33. Now with a new mask, Eric Rowan aligned himself with Bray Wyatt once again by attacking Wyatt's WrestleMania opponent, Randy Orton. Luke Harper ran in to fight off Rowan and Wyatt, which set up a match at Backlash between Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. The former Wyatt brothers faced off in their fifth singles match between each other, which Harper ultimately won, making Luke 3 and Rowan 2. After this match, Rowan's career would go quiet for the next few months. Things got going again in October 2017, when videos started showing that Rowan had reunited with Luke Harper. They now called themselves the Bludgeon Brothers, and for the next several months, they defeated every and any tag team that they faced. This naturally earned them an opportunity at the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, which they received at WrestleMania 34. After nearly five years without winning any titles, Rowan finally got his hands on some gold when he and Harper defeated the Usos and the New Day. The team stayed dominant, but as their title reign went on, more and more cracks began to form. Eventually, the Bludgeon Brothers collapsed, and they lost their titles on SmackDown to Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. On top of that, Eric Rowan needed surgery and once again disappeared from WWE. During the WWE Championship match at the 2019 Royal Rumble, Eric Rowan returned and interfered on the champion, Daniel Bryan's behalf, and helped him retain against AJ Styles. Rowan would start acting as Bryan's bodyguard, helping him during matches and doing other dirty work. After Daniel Bryan lost the WWE Championship, he and Rowan were given the opportunity to compete for the vacant SmackDown Tag Team Championship. They successfully defeated the Usos, which kicked off Redbeard's second run of the belts. Unfortunately, this run was shorter than the last. Rowan and Bryan only held the championship for about two months before, funny enough, losing them to the New Day. After their time as champions were over, both men would be the target of Roman Reigns. Roman had been attacked by an unknown individual, and the big dog believed the person who did it was Eric Rowan. Daniel and Rowan disputed the claim, until Rowan revealed that he was the person responsible. This ended Rowan's alliance with Daniel Bryan, and set up a no disqualification match against Roman Reigns. To everyone's shock, Luke Harper came running in and helped his former tag team partner defeat the Big Dog. This revived the Bludgeon Brothers, and Harper and Eric Rowan started teaming again. They faced off against Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns at Hell in a Cell, which saw Luke and Eric lose the match. Their reunion ended up being short-lived, as only about a month after uniting, Eric Rowan was drafted to Raw, while Harper remained on SmackDown. Back on the Red Brand, Rowan would start carrying a cage with them. While we didn't know what was inside, Redbeard was very protective of it. Despite his care, whatever was inside would bite him, causing Rowan to take out his frustrations on his opponents. He began racking up wins against smaller or no-name talent, and this continued for about four months. In March 2020, Noe Jose asked Rowan backstage what was inside. Eric Rowan obliged and pulled out a huge spider. With this revelation made, Eric Rowan would gear up for his final WWE match the next week. One question. Do you like cereal, but hate all the sugar and other junk? Well, you're gonna wanna hear about Magic Spoon. They're changing the game with cereal that has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Also, get this, there's only 140 calories per serving. 
Not to mention, Magic Spoon is also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Now I know what you're thinking. Zach, that's great, but does this stuff taste good? I'll let Daniel Bryan answer that one. Yes! 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 Magic Spoon's variety pack comes with four delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, and my personal favorite, cocoa. Additionally, Magic Spoon also has maple waffle, cookies and cream, and blueberry and cinnamon. I kind of stopped having breakfast in high school, but now I really like having a bowl of Magic Spoon when I get up. It also makes for a great midnight snack during those late editing sessions. If you're hesitant about giving Magic Spoon a try, fear not. Magic Spoon's products are backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like their cereal for any reason, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. Hit my link below this video and use code TAPOUTCORNER to save $5. Now back to Eric Rowan. On the last Raw before the pandemic era, Rowan marched to the ring with his pet in hand. Unlike before, everyone knew what was inside the cage and wondered how this would affect Rowan's opponent. Drew McIntyre made his entrance next, but didn't seem afraid of Rowan's spider. In an ironic callback to Rowan's first match, the first move performed in his last was a big boot, but this time, Rowan was on the receiving end. McIntyre kept laying into Rowan, eventually sending the big man to the outside. Rowan tried to get the upper hand, but Drew had his number. The Scottish warrior even managed to flip Rowan with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. That move knocked the wind out of Rowan, so McIntyre decided to give him a break. While waiting, Drew McIntyre grabbed the steel steps and slammed them onto the cage. Rowan was furious, but Drew McIntyre was still one step ahead of him. The match got back into the ring, where McIntyre threw Rowan head first into the ring post and then performed a future shock DDT. Drew signaled for the Claymore and put an end to Eric Rowan's misery and defeated him. It's pretty ironic that Rowan's first match in 2012 was a squash, and his last match about seven years later was also a squash, but with the roles reversed. It's even stranger considering Rowan's size, and that usually big guys aren't the ones being squashed. As for the spider, it was kind of an anticlimactic ending to the storyline. Maybe there were plans to develop it further, but at the very least, the story did have an ending, and we found out what was inside. As I alluded to earlier, the COVID-19 pandemic hit shortly after Rowan's match with Drew McIntyre. Rowan wouldn't be seen or heard from in WWE for about a month. Then on April 15th, 2020, Eric Rowan, along with many other WWE wrestlers, were released due to budget cuts. Since leaving WWE, Rowan has started competing as an independent wrestler under the name Eric Redbeard. He's even going to be appearing at my show in Fargo, North Dakota, so if you want to see him in person, definitely check it out. <laughs> Links to the tickets are in the description. If you're brave enough, watch the first and last matches of a scary WWE wrestler, Doink the Clown. Mustn Abby was the first to comment on that video, so Mustn gets the shout out. Way to go! Until next time, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.